how significant is this discovery and where is the investigation headed next? Let's get some answers and turn to Captain Tim Taylor in New York. He's the president of Tiburon Subsea Services, a company dedicated to ocean research and exploration. Tim, welcome back. Uh, how are you doing? So this discovery certainly seems to be just one piece of the puzzle here. We know something happened to the plane. We know the plane went down, but we still don't know how it went down. Was it foul play? Was it an accident? Correct? Correct. And, and this part could lend some information to that. The investigators are not only going to identify that it is from Flight 370 uh, and, and the 777, but if it is, which it looks like it is, uh, they can they can glean a lot of information, and it's not going to not going to find this information out tomorrow or the next day. It's going to take time under microscopes, under different test systems, uh, to to find out the stress on the wing and how how it went down in the water. It, it can it can lead a, to a lot of detailed information uh, on on uh, on on how the plane crashed. So Malaysia's prime minister appeared very confident in announcing that this piece was, in fact, from MH370. Then we heard from the French prosecutor, and he wasn't as categorical. What do you make of that? I, I think that's, a, that's caution. Um, you, you need to have all your facts. They're, they're trusted with identifying exactly and coming up with exact uh, serial numbers and matching it up, and that's their job. So until they do their job, they're not going to come out and tell you that. As far as uh, the Malaysian government, uh, it satisfied their standards that it's it's from a, a 777, and, and uh, obviously it's good enough for them to make this announcement as they have. Uh, that's politics. Uh, as far as underwater, um, finding this and locating it and, and, and knowing that it's from a plane, I think that's that's uh, that's been done. So, Tim, when you look at this uh, piece that we're showing right now on the air, this flap around the section of that wing, what does that tell you when you look at its condition? Well, I, I, I haven't, I've seen only pictures, but uh, as, uh, as far as it floating in the water and the growth and how long it's been there, you're going to be able to tell a lot from that. Uh, it, how it broke up uh, is also... You, you'll be able to ID and find out some information uh, about how the, the plane and how long it's been in the water. Now, there's some big questions I have that would love some answers for is how long it was sitting on that beach because no one has really addressed that. And that, that, that is something that hopefully the, the, uh, um, the French will be able to determine that it, it just washed ashore or it hadn't. And that will make a, a, a big difference when looking for more debris because this is ultimately an important piece because we know that the, the plane is in the water but finding more debris ultimately is is just more pieces in the puzzle and the more we can get or the more people can find the the more they'll know uh, on uh, on what happened to this plane and what about the fact that this was found on reunion island near the coast of africa mm -hmm. and given how much time tim has gone by do you think search crews need to perhaps uh, refocus the area where they're ha where they're searching well, don't confuse where the debris that washed up across the ocean, because it's been 500 days, and that's exactly what's going to happen. When when uh, when the when the uh, tsunami hit Japan, it took a year or more for for uh, uh, debris to wash up on the on the west coast of the United States. So this is typical, typically what you'll see. Obviously, in a tsunami, is a vast amount more. Uh, to wash up on shore. So a plane is a very small thing. So to find just one piece on a shore is, is almost a miracle. But it is coming ashore and it is there. So there are a lot of other things on this plane besides a wing that will float. Seat cushions and luggage and, and, and plastic bottles and things of that, na that nature that might have uh, uh, items on there that could be identified as coming from the plane. So um, do not confuse the search area that they're looking, because that's where it went down with the search area that the debris floated up on, because they're two separate things. They, they help each other, they're part of the puzzle, but, but they're not gonna change their search area. The search area, they're, they're pretty solid on where they're Understood, looking. understood. So tell me what you think should be next in the investigation. What exactly will, be, will experts be looking at in addition to this wing? Well, uh, in addition to the wing, I, I mean, I think they're gonna focus on uh, now that they know the, for sure that it is the plane is in the water, the search, uh, search efforts should be uh, rejuvenated or at least um, focused on the same areas they're working at. Um, now, you've got a whole host of issues with that, too, because of depth 
and terrain, and even even with years of searching, it may not be found. It it it, it, can, it is conceivable that that this may be the only piece of the plane that's found. Uh, it, it 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 that is a chance, and that they may never find the wreckage. So um, I, I feel for the families, but it is a it is a uh, it is a possibility. It's happened in the past. All right, Captain Tim Taylor joining us live from New York. Thank you.